What's up, everybody? It's FYGP. So I was uh, away for a long time just talking about um, other stuff and doing other stuff in my life. Uh, not focusing on politics that much, not focusing on foreign policy that much. But I'm back with another video and um, hopefully some people will actually watch this video. And I want to make my response video to, uh, you know, this video right here. Since yesterday was September 11th, the false flag known as September 11th, um, we have a video that is quite fitting because what happened after the false flag of September 11th is that Iraq and Afghanistan were invaded by the United States and the media was spreading ridiculous conspiracy theories such as Saddam Hussein being in bed with Al-Qaeda. Which was, of course, not the case because Saddam was actually persecuting Al-Qaeda in his country. So, the media lies about things all the time. They make up crazy conspiracy theories all the time. And in contrast to the conspiracy theories that Alex Jones might spout, these conspiracy theories that the media has been telling us for decades have actually led to the invasion of countries and for the heightening of public support for the invasion of countries, which is despicable. And these people are not, you know, honest whatsoever. And who are they to call anybody a conspiracy theorist after spouting, you know, the WMD's lie of Iraq? So, I wanted to kind of come back and address that a little bit, and I want to take a look at this video. Is it time the U.S. apologized for invading Iraq? I think it should be, it's more than just time. I think they should really, you know, apologize a lot earlier. So, they bring on an expert. Let's take a listen. Brigadier General, you served as the Deputy Director of Operations. So, that's a Brigadier General of the U.S. Army. Let's take a look. Chief US this is Al Jazeera English, by the way. So Al Jazeera is, of course, funded by Qatar. And uh, Qatar is, of course, um, an ally of the United States in the Middle East. And uh, they are funding a lot of these so-called freedom fighters in countries such as Syria. spokesman in Iraq after the invasion. 15 years on from that invasion and occupation of Iraq by the US and its allies, do you have any regrets? Do you have anything you want to apologize for or you think the US should apologize for? Well, I don't think so. Uh, I was on the record as apologizing for the Abu Ghraib problem, the Abu Ghraib situation. Obviously, some... So, yeah, um, I don't know. Half a million people died? A million people died? Nobody knows the exact number. And he asks him if the U.S. Has, has anything to apologize for. And he says, no, absolutely not. There's nothing we should apologize for. Well, I think you should apologize for turning that country into a failed state. Some of our soldiers had screwed up there. Uh, they embarrassed the nation. They embarrassed our credibility inside of Iraq. I apologize for that. But I think, by and large, uh, there is nothing to apologize for. There's nothing, no, no, there's nothing to apologize for. Just a million dead people, yeah, nothing to apologize for. A country completely in shambles for more than a decade. Nothing to apologize for, yeah. Nothing to apologize for. So when the US invaded Iraq in 2003 in defiance of international law, no WMDs found, no Al-Qaeda connections, terror threat to the US increased, thousands of people tortured, hundreds of thousands killed, millions displaced from their homes, Iran's influence increased in the region, ISIL born in Iraq, several trillion dollars burned through in the process. You don't think that requires any kind of, you know what, we got some things wrong? Well, we certainly did get some things wrong, but that's what happens. Unlike being in the media where you can write a editorial saying, I got it wrong, you don't get the do-overs in history, you don't get the do-over in these types of events. Look, I understand your point of view. You've had that point of view since 2003. You're selecting your facts to promote your thesis, but I think that's... Yeah, you are. we are not selecting facts. We are just looking at the situation in the ground, which is absolutely, you know, I, I don't know. It's total, it's a total mess. There's no other words for it. 
So we are. I'm not selecting any facts. I mean, what progress has Iraq made since the U.S. invasion of 2003? In fact, they have only regressed. They have uh, regressed back to the Middle Ages with a, you know, <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? Somewhat of an incomplete point of view. It I mean, is certainly a lot of the media. Well, oh, hold I, on. Plenty of top U.S. generals no, at the no, time no, no, no. No, no, had their I, opposition to but the But I've war. read your article yeah. from 2000. 13, oh, no, no. And that's exactly what you said in 2013, yeah. and you're repeating it now. Yeah. So, but, but what? Okay. So, yeah, what? because nothing changed since 2013 until now in Iraq. It's still a mess, isn't it? And I quote to someone else: "Plenty of top U.S. generals at the time, at the time, let's forget do-overs. Mm -hmm. They warned Eric Shinseki, former Army Chief of Staff, Anthony Zinni, former CENTCOM commander, even Colin Powell in private, former General Secretary of State at the time, had their doubts about the war. But you didn't, did you? I mean, you still seem to be a true believer. You went to work for George W. Bush after retiring from the military. So well, you well, let's be very clear. I was in Europe." when the invasion went off. I had no influence on the decisions that were made, but like good soldiers, when I was assigned to Iraq, I did my job. And that's did exactly, that? what, did you and that's exactly what 500,000 other soldiers did as well. I'm just wondering, did you have your doubts at the time? I'm not sure there's ever been a soldier that's gone into a war or gone into battle that hasn't had some doubts. Countless inquiries in the UK and the US have said the intelligence wasn't just wrong, it was heavily leaned on, politicized, selected, cherry-picked, to use an argument you were using about my arguments, it wasn't just an innocent error going into Iraq. I don't think you can get every nation in the world that's analyzed in Yeah, of course, of course it wasn't just an innocent error. It was a massive plan. And to help uh, with uh, this invasion, they instigated this false flag known as 9-11, which the anniversary of that was yesterday. And... Um, and they lied, they lied so many times about the weapons of mass destruction. In fact, the weapons that I'm worried about are the weapons of mass distraction. And that is the media, CNNs, MSNBCs, the Fox Newses of the world, that are all just propaganda tools. They might act different on some issues, they might, you know, uh, spout some different talking points on some issues, but in fact, they are all the same. And uh, it's divide and conquer. That's what they do all the time. So regarding Iraq, Saddam Hussein wanted to trade his oil uh, to Europe in euros. And not in US dollars anymore. Not in the petrodollar anymore. And because he did that, he had to be removed. And, um, yeah. and the country is now in shambles because the US needs to go and bomb and destroy any country that doesn't want to sell its oil in petrodollars anymore. The situation to selectively cherry pick intelligence. There's always an outlier that will but say the majority this of nations of the world were opposed to the Iraq invasion. So obviously they, they interpret the intelligence very differently they, to you they and your certainly superiors. didn't vote that way in the UN. They didn't what, what they sorry? didn't vote that way in the UN. Did you get a UN resolution to support the war? It was in violation of international law. One did, of the things I said earlier. Did in fact the Security Council meet and oppose the war. Did the UN Security Council approve the war? You didn't answer my question. No, because I'm not here to answer your question. And You're I'm here not to here answer to answer. Mine. Well, I'm You're not here to answer my questions. That's very odd. <laughs> I'm a, that's a very odd thing to say in an interview. Mate, did they, did you they are, approve? You are selectively choosing well, your everything's facts. selective. Anything you say is selective. Anything like that. So let's ask, let me ask the question. You answer, then ask me one. Did the United Nations Security Council approve the war in Iraq? Kofi Annan said it was a violation of international law. No, they didn't. But at the same time, 1141 gave a lot of reason for the war to occur. Would we like to do a do-over? Of course we would. Would we have done it differently? Of course would we would. Would you have done it at all is the question. Let's take That's what I'm wondering. Well, let's take a look at Syria today. The conditions are very, very much the same. Authoritarian leader Authoritarian. is leading a group that is a minority inside the country, heavily oppressed his people. Heavily oppressed, yeah, sure. He heavily oppressed all of his people. Oh, yeah, in Syria, before the war, they had religious freedom. Christians in Syria did not have to worry about getting slaughtered by Islamic extremists when Assad was still in power. Oh, but he opp oppressed all of the minorities. Yeah, bullshit. And look what's happening there. 
You talked in 2014 about the greatest disaster, 2013 about the greatest disaster and refugee flow mm. and humanitarian problem inside the Middle East. And Syria's worse. And Syria's worse. And Iraq's number two. And Syria the United States is, is responsible worse. for that. Syria so that's is pretty worse. bad. The two worst refugee crises were caused by Assad and the US government. It's not great company to be in, is it? No, it certainly is not. But the facts and the reasons... It's not really caused by Assad. It's caused by all of the so-called rebels that Al Jazeera keeps supporting. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, Qatar, the country that funds Al Jazeera, is supporting. I'm going to cover another video uh, where I'm going to talk about Al Jazeera and uh, basically the Syrian opposition. And at least they uh, bring up experts from Russia to kind of rebut the points that the pro-US or pro-rebel, pro-terrorist experts make so i'm going to cover this uh, that video in my next video it's called has assad won the war i think it's called or it's called has the opposition syrian opposition lost lost the war so stay tuned for that coming up soon or different do you believe that saddam if still in power would be running sort of some Mesopotamian holiday spa? No, of, course of course not. not. He would be oppressing his people. The Arab Spring would have reached <laughs> his You can't country. go to war on a counterfactual. You can't say, we, we've we gone in and we're responsible we, we, for tens we, of thousands of deaths, millions of refugees, but you know what, have we not gone, it would have been worse. We don't know that, do we? we what we not, do know... It would have not been worse. Is we many not, people died as a result of an illegal We did not go into the war on a counterfactual. Every intelligence service in the world, particularly in the wake of... Yes, you did go into the war on a counterfactual basis. Uh, yeah, every intelligence service in the world said that it was so. Well, all of the intelligence services are also saying that Russia has supposedly hacked the US election. Does that make it true? Absolutely not. The CIA has gotten things wrong so many fucking times thousands of deaths millions of refugees but you know what have we not gone it would have been worse we don't know that do we, we what we not, do know is we that many not, people died as a result of an illegal we did not go into the war on a counterfactual every intelligence service in the world particularly in the wake of 9 11 which i think you discount completely believed that there was a weapons of mass destruction what what, what did 9 11 have to do with iraq so again, he comes up with the same talking points. Like, we are not talking about the Mujahideen or Al-Qaeda, which we, we used to fund, right, in the 1980s against the Soviets, which the U.S. created entirely. We're not talking about that. Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with 9-11. And here's that same old talking point with bringing up 9-11 whenever you're pushed into the corner about a debate regarding Iraq. What did 9-11 have to do with Iraq? Absolutely nothing. Threat. If we had not believed that as a government, if we had not believed that as a nation, if we had not believed that as military, we wouldn't have gone. And having now knowing what you know now, would you go in again? Jeb Bush, for example, has said no. Of course we would not have. But you don't get to do that, Mehdi. That, that's the privilege I, of the media. You, you don't get to go back and do it again, but you do get to say, I'm sorry, we got it wrong. We shouldn't have done it. We got Which it wrong. Which you're not willing to say. We got it wrong. Okay, so you do think... So I'm, I'm, well, don't what, put words in my mouth. That's what I, I don't want to, so I'm checking. What's the, which bit are you saying was wrong? We didn't have the facts then that we have now. Of course we would have enjoyed having the facts then. We wouldn't have done it that way. And we may have done it a different way. And yet other countries have the same facts and didn't back your invasion. Isn't such it as, a case? Such as? France, Germany, Russia, China. Did the German intelligence services not have the same intelligence as you? They did. But that was a political decision, not an intelligence based A good thing. political decision. England went in there. A we had 17 nations that fought yeah, with us side the, by and side. The, and the Chilcot Inquiry, the official investigation to the Iraq war, lambasted the British government for its, how it used intelligence and how, it, how okay. legal or illegal it was. So what you're suggesting is that there was a conspiracy of almost every intelligence service in the world nope. to politicize the nope. facts. I'm saying there was definitely a conspiracy by members of the Bush administration to lean on those facts, politicize those facts, cherry pick those facts, and present a false case for well, I mean why did you exactly right yeah that's exactly right so yeah uh, I'm gonna leave the full interview in the description I actually think that this guy did quite a good job 
rebutting all of the bullshit coming out of this guy's mouth. So yeah, this is my video for um, Iraq. And I hope that one day we will have peace in the Middle East.